I've had this article on my list to read for quite some time. One of the things I love to do is to look at articles, whether they're a year old or 20 years old, 30 years old, because they're a real snapshot in time. That is true of this 2016 article from the Times called The Rise of the Middleton Class. Remember, July 2016. Pippa has recently gotten engaged to James Matthews, who works in finance. The world doesn't yet know about the budding romance between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And the Queen is still alive. Let's get into some highlights of this article. As you may anticipate, it is rife with classism. Lego. This is how the author describes this relationship. He says of this planned marriage that it is, quote, a quintessentially British moment when the 19th and 21st centuries collide, when ancient ideas of class breeding and regal propriety clash head on with freedom, feminism, and social mobility, end quote. We're calling this feminism? Social propriety, sure. I'm not sure about freedom necessarily. Definitely a no on feminism. Because women moving into positions of power or marginalized people does not necessarily mean that they are going to break with the patriarchal structure that is in place. It doesn't mean that they are going to go out of their way to lift up others like them or make life better for women and marginalized people. We have seen examples of this again and again. Back to the article. Further down, the author says, quote, it's more about the steady rise of Britain's middle class at the expense of the titled gentry and the royal family's quest to remain both revered and relevant in the wake of a hugely popular monarch, end quote. And I think that is part of the struggle that we're seeing playing out now. How do you stay traditional enough to maintain your royal status and to be revered? while also trying to stay current and in touch with younger generations so that you seem human. And can those two things coexist? I think we're starting to see some of this play out with some in the royal household allegedly upset about Kate and William's new social media. It's glossier, it's cinematic, it's Hollywood. Not everyone loves it. And then there is the future brother-in-law of it all. Spencer Matthews, brother of James, is described in this article as a reality TV star who has, quote, bedded more than 100 women and was kicked off another reality show after he admitted that he took steroids because he wanted to look good in the shower, end quote. Apparently he is now a reformed bro, so good for you, Spence. Something else that the article taught me is that I was today years old when I learned that Pippa wrote a book. It's called Celebrate, A Year of Festivities for Families and Friends, and it came out in 2012. I'd have to look more into it, but I don't recall this being portrayed as a cash grab using her royal connections. But anyway, here is one of the reviews. One gave it two stars and said, well, I've seen worse cookbooks. Glass half full. There's a five star review related to the connection to Kate Middleton, obviously. Other people who love the recommendations. A lot of the reviews are, I'm pleasantly surprised it didn't suck but listen to how the author describes this book. Quote, her book Celebrate was published to gales of ridicule. Her advice on entertaining included such piercing insights as there is something very British about tea and don't forget to remove the price tag from the gift, end quote. Y'all hand out some aloe for these burns. Damn. <laughs> Way harsh tie. Moving back into classism. Quote, the increasing advance into royal circles of successful middle-class families such as the Middletons and the Matthewses may be regarded by many as a welcome change from the stultifying aristocratic inbreeding that was favored by the monarchy for centuries. Yet, the more the royals embrace the real world, the more likely that the real world will turn around and bite them, end quote. Ominous, but it also does show you that tension that exists between being royal, royal, and being a real person. Can you become too relatable? And can you be way too out of touch with a modern world? Catherine Mayer was interviewed for this article and she wrote a biography about Prince Charles. And this is what she has to say. Quote, what will kill off the monarchy fastest is the demystification of royalty, the reality TV style, end quote. She goes on to say that Kate understands this, but Pippa ain't that smart, which yikes, <laughs> y'all, this is mean. Jeez. And interestingly enough, an American actress, among other things, will enter the fold just a few months later. 
But what's interesting now, you know, seven, eight years later is how William and Kate are changing their social media to have that kind of glossy reality TV show filter. Then there's the Princess Diana of it all. And I'll be honest, the main theory that I was working off of was that aristocrats, after seeing what happened to Diana, did not want their girls marrying into royalty. It wasn't worth it. And I think while that can be true, I think something else is also plausible. And it's from this article. After Diana was so flaky, not my words, the idea was perhaps they are better off with a nice middle-class girl who will follow the rules. I think that coupled with the need to look relatable and modern is probably among some of the reasons that Kate was approved as a bride for William. Besides being in love, we know that there are other things that go into making these decisions when it is going to be the future queen of the UK and the Commonwealth. And then the author touches on this, which I've been thinking about for quite some time. Is the monarchy popular or is it just the queen? Quote, the paradoxical problem for British royalty is the queen's popularity, built on her record-breaking reign and unswerving duty to the country. She has helped to keep the wolves from the palace door and is likely to do so for as long as she remains on the throne. It's what comes next that worries the palace. The outpouring of affection we've seen during these 90th birthday celebrations is not love of the monarchy, it's love of the queen, says York, end quote. Peter York, just FYI, is a veteran observer of the British aristocracy and co-author of the official Sloan Ranger handbook. I think that's an interesting struggle. As a monarch, you obviously want to be popular, but you also need to be laying the groundwork so that future monarchs are also popular. And I wonder during her reign with the expansion of who's a working royal, how much they do, I wonder if those fights between individuals or couples for popularity have led to a loss of sight over the long-term goal, which is popularity and stability past Queen Elizabeth. I think that is going to be a very interesting topic to cover at some point, really looking critically at the reign of Queen Elizabeth. Moving on, the article discusses that there are way too many royals for any meaningful role, which is perhaps one of the reasons why King Charles, which is perhaps one of the reasons that the future king wants to slim down the monarchy. And then there is suitability with who Pippa is marrying and a lot of concern over hedge funds. Quote, things may get rougher if our future queen's brother-in-law falls foul of hedge fund mischief. Matthews has, by all accounts, managed his business blamelessly, although his fund has been caught up in the occasional city scandal and has links to several Caribbean tax havens that are under investigation by U.S. authorities, end quote. Just some, like, city scandals, Caribbean tax havens that the U.S. government isn't into. It's just, like, just a weird paragraph. It's interesting just reading that and thinking of Samantha Markle, for example. I don't remember a lot of articles talking about how Prince Harry might be affected by the existence of Samantha Markle. It was more so focused as a slight against Meghan. You know, Samantha's not the problem, it's Meghan. This is not an obvious cash grab by Samantha Markle, it's something wrong with Meghan. That is where the conversation seemed to go when it involved Prince Harry's future wife. It kind of makes me wonder if Pippa and perhaps Kate were relieved when Meghan came on the scene. It definitely focused the spotlight. Now, obviously, if the spotlight's too positive, that's a problem. But it diverted from Pippa, who I would argue doesn't deserve that scrutiny anyway. Her sister is now a part of the royal family. She didn't marry someone from royalty. And that's not an indictment against her. That's an indictment against a rabid press. But it's a very interesting article, and it reminds you how in the UK versus the US, middle class means something very, very different. In America, Kate is easily upper middle class or just upper class. But because she wasn't born into aristocracy, her family isn't like landholding gentry, she is considered middle class. It's less about money, it's more about titles, land, and lineage. So yeah, that was an interesting trip down memory lane.